Welcome everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. So suppose a certain college graduate borrows $8,000 to buy a car. So this information is important. The lender charges interest at an annual rate of 10%. Assuming that interest is compounded continuously and that the borrower makes payment, so the borrower is going to be making payment continuously at a constant annual rate, K. Okay. Determine the payment rate, K, that is required to pay off the balance in three years, and also determine how much interest is paid during the three-year period. Okay. So let's let's answer the first part. We want to determine the payment rate, K, to pay off the loan in three years. So this is going to be modeled by the following differential equations. So we have ds dt is equal to the rate times s minus k, where this is the rate of change. Um, and we know s is the amount after some time t, and r is the interest rate, and k is the constant deposit or withdrawal. So in this case, since you're going to be paying off a loan, it's a minus k. Now, if you were to solve this differential equation to find s of t, you're going to have to go through some solving. So we want to figure out what is our function S of T is. Let's go ahead and use this model to figure out what is our function S of T, which will be the amount after any time T in years. So we're going to go ahead and solve this differential equation. We will subtract R times S on both sides, since this is a linear equation. So ds dt minus R times S is equal to negative K. Now, this is our function uh, p of t, if you want to call it that. We're looking for an integrating factor. I'll leave a similar link for solving linear differential equations in the description box for you to check it out. So the procedure I'm about to do will make sense. So we're trying to look for this uh, mu of t, which is going to be e to the integral of p of t dt. And p of t is this function right here. That's your p of t. So if I substitute P of t, I have the integral of negative r dt, and this would be to the negative rt. So that is our integrating factor. We take that and we multiply both sides by that factor to this equation. So we multiply e to the power of rt on both sides. So that gives us uh, e to the negative rt times ds dt minus e to the negative rt times r times s is equal to negative k times e to the negative rt. So that's what we go when you multiply both sides by this integrating factor mu. Now the left hand side right here, this is your derivative respect to time of mu of t e to the negative rt times s, s of t, you can also write it like that. You can check it out with product rule. And on the right-hand side, well, that's just what it is. So it's negative k e to the negative rt. Now to solve for, so our goal is to solve for this. So to solve for that, we're going to go ahead and now integrate both sides respect to t. So now if we integrate both sides respect to t, here's what we're going to obtain. The left side, the differential and the integral cancel each other. So we have e to the negative rt times s is equal to, on the right-hand side, k is a constant, r is a constant. So when you integrate e to the power of negative rt, the power will come in the denominator. So you'll have negative k over negative r, e to the negative rt, plus some constant c. Now, k and r, they're both negative. So I'm just going to get rid of that. So this is over r, positive k over r. And finally, we solve for uh, our function s of t. So s or s of t is equal to divide both sides by e to the negative rt. You have k over r, e to the rt will cancel, plus c times e to the positive rt. Since we divide it right here, e to the negative rt on both sides, that's how we got that. All right, so that is our model that's gonna design this problem. Now, how do we find C? Well, C if you have an initial condition. So for this particular example, let's suppose the initial uh, condition is some S naught. 
So if you plug this in for t equals zero and s of t is s naught, so you will have s naught is equal to k over r plus c e to the power of r times zero, which is really e to the power of zero, that's one. So we will have s naught minus k over r is equal to c. Now, once you plug this in here, you get your model, and then we're ready to answer the problem. So the function s of t that we're after, it's going to be k over r plus, well, c is what we just computed. So that's s naught minus k over r times e to the rt. And I'm going to distribute e to the rt and group this a little bit more. So you will have k over r plus s naught e to the rt minus k over r e to the negative uh, positive rt. So I just distributed that and I'm going to rearrange them. I'm going to group these guys together since they both share k over r. So here's what this looks like. So you'll have s naught e to the rt uh, plus I factor out k over r times so I need a 1 minus e to the rt. So I'm only working on these two terms to factor them. So this is my model for the function s of t. Now let's answer the problem. So we know that uh, we're trying to figure out k. So you're borrowing $8,000. So when time is zero, you're starting with $8,000. So our s of zero, it's going to be $8,000. We're looking for k, how much should this person uh, pay every year? And we also know that um, the rate the lender is charging is 10%. And we want to know how much you need to pay so they can pay off the loan in three years. So we know the rate that's 10%, which is 0 0.10. And we want to pay off the loan so the balance in three years should be zero. That's what that means. So let's figure out what K is. So plug everything in, we already have the model. So the amount after three years, we want that to be zero. So that means that this is going to be zero equal. So I'm setting this to zero because we want to balance to be zero after three years. So we have zero is equal to S naught, that's 8,000 e to the R, that's 0.1 times three, because T is three, plus K, we don't know, we're looking for it. R is going to be um, uh, 0.1 times one minus e to the power of 0.1 times three. Now at this point you need a calculator to actually figure out the number, uh, but let's just move things around and isolate k so you can punch this in your calculator. So I'm gonna go ahead and subtract 8,000 times e to the power of 0.3. So this will give me negative 8,000 times e to the power of 0.3 is equal to k over 0.1 times 1 minus e to the power of 0.3. And now I divide by that number, multiply by 0.10. So that gives me uh, negative 8,000 times 0.1 times e to the 0.3 divided by 1 minus e to the power of 0.3. That is k. Now, if you're not allowed to use a calculator, of course, this is an acceptable answer. But uh, if you do punch this in your calculator, you will get that K is going to be about $3,086.64 per year. So this is how much the person will have to pay for three years so that the loan is paid after three years. So that's the first part. Now, for the second part, well, we want to know how much was interest. So we know that we borrowed uh, $8,000. And then you're paying this much, which is $3,086.64 for three years. So uh, paying uh, this much, $3,086.64 for three years. So this times three. And that's going to give you about 1,259.92. So the interest, so how much was paid on interest? So the interest 
it's going to be so how much you're paying so that's 9259.92 minus $8000 so if you take this number and do the subtraction you'll get $1259.92 for interest so this is how much the person will pay on interest all right, Al, I hope this makes sense. I will see you next time.